Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, April 7th, around 8.15 p.m. Mountain Time 2024. Just a few hours till the total solar eclipse of April 8th begins in Sinaloa, Mexico, as it makes its way across the U.S., Tomorrow, starting late morning and through the early afternoon, we will show you the full footage of the Path of Totality in just a moment. Keep calm. It's boom time. Severe thunderstorms flooding rain to return to the plains and the south this week. And severe weather closes parts of I-80 and Highway 30, knocks out power to customers in the panhandle. According to the Nebraska Department of Transportation, the strong winds of down power lines across the panhandle and linemen are hard at work restoring the power. And in fact, Nebraska, just 700 customers without power. So they've done a good job there. Bad news in Colorado, 90,000 without power. And it's a windy one out there. And bad news for the solar eclipse viewers, especially those in Texas. Severe storms may pose a threat. And we're going to have that forecast in just a moment. Here is the severe storm threat for the Southern Plains. And let's just open up that image so we get a bigger view. You can see Wichita Falls to Dallas. And in the path of totality, Texarkana, Waco, Austin area, you could be in uh, for some very likely or severe storms tomorrow. Multiple hazards across the central U.S. and southern plains elevated to critical fire weather conditions are expected in eastern New Mexico, southwest Texas, and Guam today. Heavy snow and even strong winds continue for the western high plains today, leading to additional power outages. Blizzard and whiteout conditions may be possible at times in some regions. Strong to severe thunderstorms are possible across the middle and lower Mississippi Valley region today as well. Let's take a look at that. You can see the storm system there uh, going to be making its way through Monday and into Tuesday where that severe weather threat blows up over the path of totality there. Holy macaroni. A lot of people going to be in that region. So by at slightly after the eclipse is really when that severe weather kicks in. Let's take a look at the total snowfall. And you can see that system moving through the northern plains there, still dumping more snow. Could be blizzard conditions. That just means high wind and whiteout. And heavy snow coming into British Columbia there. Holy macaroni, four feet in some areas. As we move the models through, April 14th and 15th, a system moves into California, going to be bringing heavy snow to the Sierras and the Rockies, and we could be seeing some record snow from Montana. Take a look at that. It's early, uh, 10 days out, but something significant is brewing. Talk about significant things brewing. We're about to take a look at crazy footage on the conditions earlier uh, at the Huguenot Tunnel in Cape Town, West Cape, South Africa. And keep your eye on the high-profile vehicle here. It is windy there. So windy, it's blowing cars around. And now watch what happens here. Wow. That is some windy conditions there. And hopefully, that didn't drop off there too far. But I do digress. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Interesting rumbler up here in Canada, 3.3. Um, sure, people are conspiracy theorizing that that's under deep underground military bases and a 5.0 in China. Overall normal activity worldwide. Bringing us over to the Worldwide Volcano News update. Saban Kaya to 24,000 today. Raventador to 14,000. Liwa Tobi puffing and passing to 7,000. Popo on the list as well. And an update at the Reykjanes Peninsula. And it's showing that another significant change has appeared at the eruption site over the last 48 hours. As we mentioned in the last update, the northern cinder cone has been showing the most lava effusion activity of the two cones at that time. However, judging at least from the latest Sentinel-2 satellite acquisitions from today... The larger northern crater has become the one and only protagonist of the eruption. 
So there is only one crater left, and it is pumping out a significant amount of magma as the evolution of this eruption continues. Space weather news for April 8th, which is Eclipse Day. We do have that one, two sunspots, a small prick, and a bigger one, Earth-facing now. Very low level activity on the sun. X-rays at the B range, B5.6. Three-day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet. Not much going on up there at Solar Max. Now, tomorrow, there will be a lot going on across America, especially on the path of totality for the total solar eclipse on April 8th. Now, will the path of totality pass over every U.S. city named Nineveh? No, that is complete fabrication and a lie. It may come near two, uh, but there is no significance whatsoever. What we have here is a video of the shadow of totality as it makes landfall just after 11 a.m. on the west coast of Mexico in Sinaloa. And so what we're going to do here is walk the entire eclipse through. So it comes on land at 11.07 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. The duration of totality is 4 minutes and 27 seconds. The speed of the moon's shadow here is moving at 1,561 miles per hour as it rapidly makes its way across the United States. The width of the path of totality is 122 miles at the beginning and slowly shrinks as it goes. Right now it's at 121.5 as it approaches Uvalde, Hondo, Divine, and Texas. Now we're in the U.S. Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, it should begin around 12, 29, as it rapidly moves at 1,607 miles per hour across Texas. Totality will last four minutes and 25 seconds. Here we are at 1.35 p.m. It will just be hitting Colleen. In case you were wondering, it will approach Dallas. Totality will begin at 140 in Dallas and Fort Worth, and then Oklahoma comes. So this baby is now rushing across the U.S. at almost 1,700 miles per hour. Yes, right there, 1,700 miles per hour. Little Rock, Arkansas will hit totality at 151. Boom, right there. P.M. Central, daylight time, 151 for Little Rock. As we move this through, it is speeding up. 1,800 miles per hour now is rapidly moving across Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky. The width of the path of totality has shrunk to 115 miles. Now it is 2 p.m. CDT as we approach Indianapolis. Totality will happen there at 3.05 Eastern time. The duration for totality in Indianapolis is just four minutes and two seconds. The speed of the shadow is now ex exceeding 2,000 miles per hour. It's at 2,100 miles per hour as it hit the great, hits the Great Lakes at 3.14 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, and it rapidly is moving its way across Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, into Ontario. And now we're at 3.22 p.m. Eastern Time. Totality is just 3 minutes and 40 seconds. And the shadow is now moving 2,500 miles per hour up into Canada. And the event is over for the U.S. Don't be bummed. If you're not in the path of totality, you won't get caught in bad weather and miss it. You won't get caught in any traffic jams. Stay home and you can watch it live in dozens of places, including over at Nova PBS where they will have a solar eclipse live stream as well as dozens of other people. Dad, can you explain to me what a solar eclipse is? No, son. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as this may be the very last day on earth for you to share a video. After all, tomorrow is the end times. Hit the thumbs up, become a Patreon, support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that is a eclipse boom. We love you. <laughs>